first got into chemtrails, when I had some solar panels fitted onto my roof, and I noticed on the days that the sun was out, it was great, four kilowatts, happy days. And then I noticed some days it got down to one or two kilowatts when actually the weather forecast forecast sun. I'd never taken much interest in the weather until I was earning money out of it. And then when you find out you've earned only a fifth of what you should have earned according to weather forecast, then something wasn't quite right. And I'd never heard the word before, chemtrails. And then when I went and looked it up on YouTube, I couldn't believe that somebody would actually spray the sky with lines. Um, deliberately and yet as the weeks went by I found out absolutely it's true when they were doing it and it was costing me money. There's other subjects that have come along in the meantime when I thought is there anything that could be done to stop this and having found other subjects people like Wilhelm Reich's name was coming up and even later Tesla. Wilhelm Reich very very clever person in as much that he realized there's an energy in life that's very very powerful and important and is related to good health and after many years of investigation he found out there were some fantastic properties to this and he called it Orgon which is related to ether other people came along people like um, Trevor Constable um, who looked at generating and changing the weather with certain pieces of equipment and this isn't the use of chemicals, this is actually the use of equipment which reacts with ether and it's perfectly 100% natural. Um, Willem Reich actually found out there was amazing cures with ether and one of them was cancer. He actually cured the people that the hospitals discarded and set, put them on the scrap heap basically and says we can't cure you. And Willem Reich virtually cured every single one of them. He understood what ether was about. And how we found out about the cancer is that when you change the frequencies of DNA, the DNA loses all its instructions. And that means that the DNA grows distorted and it can't grow the way that it should grow. In other words, if it's part of your skin or it's supposed to be part of your kidney, it grows into a deformed piece of the body that shouldn't even be there. Um, but by correcting the frequency, the DNA goes back to grow how it should do. And that's one of the amazing things he was working on. Tesla proved beyond any shadow of a doubt that he can actually tap into the energy which is already there. And what I mean by that is when you have two opposing potentials, um, you can tap in the difference between the two potentials and that's your energy that you, you're actually creating. Now, Tesla said something that um, I thought was very interesting. I only found this out recently. He talked about ether and he made this statement that ether controls magnetism, electricity and all energy. Now, to actually come out and say that, he must have had some basis as to why we know that Tesla based all his works on facts and many, many experiments. And of course, we use many of Tesla's technology today, both in electricity, magnetism, etc. And so we're in a position now where we're looking at equipment that Wilhelm Reich manufactured and made. We're looking at um, the way that he used it and he generated it. Now, Wilhelm Reich, he actually was called into places like California when it hadn't rained for months and months. In fact, some of these poor farmers were being bankrupt. He actually went to a place where it hadn't rained for many years. And after about six weeks, he did start to develop a very small amount of rain. But a moisture came into the area where all the plants started to flourish. According to what his daughter said, that area continued to flourish for another 50 years. The other thing that Willem Wright noticed is the texture of the rocks changed from being crumbly to having some body back to it again. So when we talk about ether, we're not talking about just weather modification or health to the body. Ether must be some kind of energy which controls, as Tesla said, everything. It's like the link that ties and controls everything together, whether it's energy, magnetism, or electricity. I would love to be able to use ether to bin one, two, three, four, five thousand square miles of camp trailing. That would be fantastic. Before they use it for all the other agendas. And if we could do that, um, happy days. Because uh, that's what a lot of people are looking forward to. A day where all this crap is not in their control anymore. And I believe if we could master this, Ether will do exactly that. Tonight we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the sickness behavior. We're going to talk about why people are having these problems. We're going to talk about how the trails are affecting us. 
as they are now. There's no doubt. Even the EPA said so. They just made mention of it about, uh, well, a couple months ago, actually, last summer. They admitted it. The EPA said it's affecting you. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. I'm Clay Lewis. Listen to Ground Zero, and we'll be back. In the United Kingdom, they just published their mortality statistics for 2016. And you'd expect, okay, what's top three? Cancer, heart attack, stroke. Always has been. Number one, dementia. Number one. Which, of course, includes uh, Alzheimer's, which is caused by aluminum. They found carbon nanotubes in Parisian lungs. Uh, in Turin, half of the children had uh, severe DNA damage from nanoparticulates. And there's a study that came out recently showing how nanoparticles interfere with the nuts and bolts of the internal workings of your cells and cause rheumatoid arthritis, which is just one of the very many autoimmune diseases we're all coming down with. We don't need any more evidence. We need to get this out into the public consciousness and say, oh, hell no. I wanted to let you know that there was a study that was released back in the summer of 2016, the Environmental Protection Agency, they declared that emissions from jet engines endanger the health of human beings and the environment. They pointed out, they were investigating the possibility that lingering contrails, this is what they called them, lingering contrails contribute to dangerous heat waves, more powerful storms, lengthening of fire seasons, and other dangerous consequences. But there's a new study about air pollution that's revealing that, once again, the particulate, the aluminum and barium that we talk about in the trails, is creating dementia. For older women, breathing air that is heavily polluted by metals and other sources of fine particulates nearly doubles the likelihood of developing dementia, and the cognitive effects of air pollution are dramatically more pronounced in women who carry a genetic variant known as APO, that's APOE-E4, which puts them at higher risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. There are so many things going on, and it's because these nanoparticles are disrupting the workings of our cells, our bodies attack ourselves, and it goes nuts. But just concentrating on what's being sprayed is only half the story. The electromagnetic aspect of this is devastating. The Russians were using the woodpecker program back in the 80s. Could they, could, they could they change it? Right here. Yeah, yeah, because it's very long wavelength. It travels a very long distance. And it's such simple technology. Our body's resonant frequency is five hertz. All you have to do is just point that at someone and it's, yeah. If you pick someone up and shake them at five times a second, they'll fall apart. There's so much research on the cognitive, physiological, and other effects of electromagnetic radiation on our bodies and our minds. And, you know, put a burrito in the microwave, you know, it does something. You often find you, you just be going about along with your day and then suddenly like, bam, you're extremely tired. You just have to sleep. And, and you'll find a lot of people at the same time will have those things. You'll have people getting similar mm -hmm like muscle spasms in different parts of the body all over the place. I mean, it's full spectrum warfare. I mean, the electromagnetic, the spraying, all these sort of things. In Scotland last year, between 2014 and 2015, the death rate from respiratory failure went up like 14% in one year. That's statistically significant. I mean, why aren't, aren't they asking, uh, why, you know, is this massive jump? Italy's death rate overall went up 11%. This is carnage. So when you're looking at the spraying, it could be private contractors doing it, sure. weather modification, it could be a number of things that they're doing. Geoengineering, of course, Matt, uh, you know, he, he was the one that introduced me to the idea of geoengineering mm -hmm. being used and, and doing the studies of geoengineering. That's what we talked about last time you were on the program. Well, you heard that now they're, they're, uh, the bees are an endangered species. Exactly. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was reading about that the other day, that uh, they now have made them an endangered species, and that's frightening. Because I mean, before we had the, what do they call that, hive... Um, you know, colony like, collapse disorder. Yeah, colony collapse, uh, colony, uh, collapse disorder. Uh, they said the colony collapse disorder could be because of, you know, Roundup, Monsanto, you, you name off all these things. But think about this. The bees are dying of the same type of problems that we're having, and that is dehydration, not getting enough water, not having enough water in our bodies, uh, having diseases that are creating this sick behavior that we're having, and the bees get it too. Even people who have good night's sleep are not feeling it. They wake up tired, they wake up dragging, and so what else could it be but something environmental, something uh, toxic that we're being exposed to? It's got to be above government because it's global. Right. They're doing it all over the world. Yeah. China, Russia, everywhere. And then that's the thing. If we don't know who, then we don't know all of the answers for them. And they can't make a solid opinion. One of my biggest frustrations is the line, 
they wouldn't do that to us. <laughs> I've heard that too. Why would they do that to us? Because they have families too. And I tell them, well, you know, I have a genetic disorder that makes me prone to cancer. And why? Because they were testing nuclear weapons in the West Deserts of Nevada, St. George, Cedar City area in Utah. My family was subjected to that radiation, which caused some DNA problems, and it got passed down to me. And my son. Yeah, and my son. They did that because they felt that that was more important than the lives of people. Spend a few bucks, uh, get your rainwater analysis, you can get your hair analyzed. And I have footage of these sprayers, and, they're, and, and they show up on flight radar. I don't know any airline that does not spray. They aren't told, oh, by the way, turn this switch when you get to a certain point. It's, it's all done centrally. There's plenty of patents where the substance actually gets injected into the exhaust. I mean, there's a U.S. Navy patent called the Powder Contrail. There's so much freaking evidence. It's insane. Technocracy, this crackpot idea dreamed up in the 1930s. They wanted to replace the economic system with an energy-based thing. But like, if you have a gold-based economy, you know how much a loaf of bread is worth and compared to the amount of gold there is. But with energy, you have to know how much energy is being stored, transferred, whatever, at all times. Hence, smart meters, smart every freaking thing. Reject it. The official line on this whole thing is, oh, we're all going to die from global warming, and we might just have to spray sulfates into the sky to reduce global warming. David Keith, Ken Calder, and Alan Roebuck are the three main guys who go out to do this stuff. They'll only talk about sulfates. But uh, their own papers say, actually, sulfates don't work. They stick together, they fall out of the sky. Instead, you've got to use nanoparticulate aluminum, barium, strontium, magnetite, and so on. And this character, Dave's research, according to US Code 50, uh, Section 1520A, I think, it's legal to spray chemical and biological warfare on a, on a civilian population as long as you call it research. So it's banned as warfare, but you can do it in your own populations. So I think all the, all the spraying is generally done by people's own militaries. What they're doing is they're establishing a geoengineering governance regime. It's a self-proclaimed regime. They ask for papers to identify things like, should we even involve the UN? Should we take into consideration human health impacts? What role will public perception and opinion play while we establish this solar geoengineering governance regime, self-titled regime? So Patrick and I, we independently um, submitted papers. I hired a PhD. My paper delved into um, the human rights aspect, that we have the right to environmental decision-making participation. Both of our papers were, of course, rejected. It is their plan to do full-scale deployment. They claim that all of the research that we've been seeing, these grid patterns, are research. They're admitting to it. The chemtrails, the geoengineering, the solar radiation management, Okay, and now you can even look up the Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative, SRMGI. Okay, it's an initiative to govern their solar radiation management, which is chemtrails, which is geoengineering. So these people are meeting, 24 scientists behind closed doors, to develop the plan for the regime to take hold to go full-scale deployment. Some days don't have chemtrails, right? Some days are clear. And really, the more clear days you get in a row, the more likelihood it is that you're going to get a grid pattern coming up. But this irregular pattern of appearance where you not only have no lines in the sky, but you also don't have the air traffic, okay? Listeners, feel free to look up at your sky. Look at that air traffic. See those days where there's nothing going on. And this irregularity in the appearance is... It's the clue. It's the first clue for the, for the newbies. Chemtrails are also called solar geoengineering. It's also called solar radiation management. It's also called stratospheric aerosol injections. Okay, and what they like to do is they like to confuse us with the terminology. It's all one thing, right? It's all chemtrails. It's all geoengineering. It's all solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol injections. Whatever word you want to give it, it's all treason. It's very, very obvious that chemtrail does not behave like an actual cloud formation. It forms out and fades into a milky haze. All right, irregular pattern of appearance, the number of trails seen simultaneously at a given time. When you're sitting out there and it's a normal day and then all of a sudden a dozen planes show up and grid the sky, whereas you've seen three planes all day, something is going on there. That's it. It's that simple. How come all of a sudden all the planes show up at once and zigzag the sky? We got broken trails, all right? 
Things are going on where they're mixing chemicals in the sky. They're using the atmosphere as a laboratory. That is a quote from NASA. Using the atmosphere as a laboratory. Okay, the exhaust is often coming where the engines are not. Okay, this wakes the people up. In 1983, we had 50 companies, right? 90% of the media, 1983, 50 companies encapsulated the 90% of the media. Now it's been consolidated down to six companies. Those six companies are owned by just a couple families. Everything is controlled. They hand a script to the entire nation and your local broadcaster is reading something that was planned to build your mental construct to control the way you think about everything. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, right? Especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. Civil society actors that, quote, manifest the will of the public. They call these astroturf because almost everything has been co-op. They contemplated how they were going to convince us that we need solar geoengineering to block out the sun. They say, society is lousy at strategy, but we are not. A few suggested that to shift the conversation in productive ways, geoengineering will be characterized publicly as a terrible choice. We'll start the conversation by introducing them this problem and we'll tell them that it's a horrible idea. Problem, reaction, solution. So here they come out immediately. Geoengineering, a horrible idea. Geoengineering climate fixes could harm billions. During this short time frame, Forbes magazine, Washington Post, chemtrails are not real. Showing a picture of chemtrails. So if you're new to this, you're being educated by your trusted news sources, okay? And they're telling you there's nothing to see up there, don't worry. But wait, wait in six months, they're gonna tell you they've got a cure for global warming and it's identical to what they have proven to you does not exist. Geoengineers to spray sun reflecting chemicals from a balloon. They think that we're so dumb that we see the lines coming out of the planes, we see these rare halos going around the sun and then all they have to say in the newspaper is, well, we're gonna use balloons, don't worry. Geoengineering gets green light from federal scientists 2017, March 25th. We've got new clouds for you, 12 of them. 12 new clouds? And how does this correspond to this entire agenda push? And the name for these vapor trails, Homo Mutatus, which literally means man-made. The World Meteorological Organization has decided to add 11 new cloud classifications. That's to their international cloud atlas, and this is a big deal because it is the first time they've added anything in 30 years. Forget being on cloud nine, we are on cloud 12, because that's how many new types of clouds have been added to this historic update coming from meteorologists. I'm a little biased, right? Exciting stuff, guys. All right, so the new types include the Vladis or roll cloud, which has been designated as a whole new species. You can see it gets its name from this long horizontal tube-like shape. Next one up, we have the cabum or the hole punch cloud. This big circular gap is sometimes caused by aircraft taking off and landing. Very easy to see, right? Makes sense there. And we also have the sparitus. These are gorgeous. It's actually my favorite. It's kind of looking like it waves while you're underwater. I mean, these are actually beautiful. I mean, check these out. And then finally, we also have the big surfer waves of the fluctus cloud. So beautiful, right? Right? There's just a sample of the new additions that we have. Meteorologists, sky watchers, daydreamers, we're all geeking out, guys. The meteorologists are all part of that same program. They're all getting handed a script and they're told to read it and they have no choice. And already, it's time for governance, okay? This is something that they just shoved down our throats for the past few months and they say they're gonna be doing it in the future and they say, don't worry, that it's not real six months ago. Now. They're already talking about how are they going to govern it. They're, they're pushing this agenda full speed, full speed ahead. They're already talking about how to govern something that we're still slowly waking up to, that they're going to be doing it to us publicly. This very small group of globalists claim that they have the exclusive rights to saving us and that we don't get it and they do. This is all of our skies. This is all of our air. This is our children's future. Everybody is involved here, all right? There was a time when people got pissed and they did something about it and they made things change, okay? They know that they can program you through social media, okay? And we can't let that happen.
it's up to us to carry this information forward. It's up to us to be the change. And if we don't do it, we're not going to have any sun. Thank you. We're in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. Geoengineering, chemtrails, forced vaccinations, population control, weather modification, war games. We have not given consent. You cannot spray the atmosphere with toxic chemicals and expect no ramifications. These chemicals go into our food, our air and our water supply. Ill effects of these have been recorded as headaches, flus, breathing problems, skin problems and my major concern is Alzheimer's disease. Aluminium causes nerve damage. Fluoride in the water works with aluminium in the air to cross into our brain. At this moment, about 24,700 young people around the age of 30 and above have Alzheimer's. In the next 10 years, 400,000 people in Australia will have dementia. It is now the third leading cause of death in Australia. About 10 years ago, I did a degree in environmental management. It's concerning to me that in that short time, we were brainwashed to believe in population control, that our earth could not sustain itself if we didn't intervene. The earth has enough resources for everyone. We need to change our thinking, but also change our actions. If you have never heard of these terms before, then please start looking at the sky and make your own decisions. It's not like they can hide the screen.